This is Duke University. Less than a month ago, the New York Times published a commentary on Mohammed Yunus's new book, Building Social Business, a new kind of capitalism that serves humanity's most pressing needs. The commentary pointed out that at first blush, it might seem surprising that a financier from a small, impoverished country would win the world's most prestigious award, the Nobel Peace Prize. But upon review, Dr. Yunus's founding of the Grameen Bank of Bangladesh and his invention of the concept of microfinance the practice of lending small amounts of money to the poor was quite revolutionary. As the Times account put it, until then, bankers figured that such borrowers were worthy of neither credit nor trust. Along came Dr. Yunus, who demonstrated that lending to the needy can be a profitable business and more can transform lives. In the 2006 Nobel lecture, Mohammed Yunus linked the pursuit of peace to the imperatives of economic development. Quote, the frustration, hostility, and anger generated by poverty cannot sustain peace in any society, he said. We must find ways to provide opportunities for people to lead decent lives. In the case of Bangladesh, as in most other developing nations, a majority of those living in poverty are women. In order to address this inequity, the Grameen Bank has focused much of its resources toward channeling credit directly toward women. Of their 8 million borrowers, 97% are women, providing those women ownership of assets and the chance to lift themselves and their families out of poverty has been his proud distinction. Born in the seaport city of Chittagong, Professor Yunus studied at Dhaka University in Bangladesh, then received a Fulbright to the United States where he studied and took a PhD in economics at Vanderbilt. He then began a career as an American academic, and that is the road not taken for you. But then he turned back, went back to his native land of Bangladesh, and teaching economics as he had learned it in this country, discovered a disparity between that knowledge and the reality that surrounded him. This led him to reinvent the science or art of economics in such a way as to visualize the poor not as objects of other people's aid or development assistance, but as agents of their own success, capable of entrepreneurship, capable of becoming self-made people. This revolution spurred him to the founding of the Grameen Bank, which has now been replicated in more than 100 countries worldwide. He's also begun to apply his bottom-up strategy for banking to healthcare, having established Grameen Healthcare, a trust dedicated to establishing sustainable best practices in a broad range of healthcare services to address the health needs of Bangladesh and the world's poor. Dr. Yunus has served on numerous international advisory groups, uh, and was awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, the United States' highest civilian honor by President Obama in August of last year. For his example, to our graduates as an agent of change and his remarkable ability to harness human energies and aspirations, Duke is proud to award the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters to Mohammed Yunus. And now please join me in welcoming Mohammed Yunus as our commencement speaker. Thank you. Mr. President, trustees, distinguished faculty, the graduating class of 2010, the families and friends of the graduating class, Good morning, and assalamu alaikum. I'm very happy this morning to receive this honorary degree. Not too many people are giving honorary degrees to bankers anymore. <laughs> so thank you for making this exception for me. And also, thank you, Duke University, for making me feel at home by creating this weather for me. <laughs> I feel very good. And congratulations to the graduating class. 
you are a lucky generation. You are lucky because you have the most powerful technology in your hand to create a new world. Our generations didn't have that. And the wonderful technology that you have in your hand, you will decide where you take this technology to. Because technology is like a vehicle, it's like a car. It's the driver who decides where you want to take it to, yes, take you to. If you want to use this technology to make money, it will take you to make money and make a lot of money. If you want to take this technology to change the world, make it a better world, definitely it will take you there. So it's your choice what you want to do with it. You are the luckiest graduating class because you are graduating from Duke University. And you are the brightest because you are a graduate from Duke University. But imagine, remember, all the millions of young people all around the world were not as lucky as you are. They couldn't even go to school. They are as bright as you are, most of them. They will be, they'll be as creative as anybody anywhere. But they never had the opportunity to go to even the school. So that's a challenge, how we make that happen. That nobody in the world <coughs> is deprived, <coughs> excuse me, deprived from the education so that they can discover themselves, discover their worth. With the given technology that we have now, I've been talking about for a long time, that we have the capability now to create the digital Aladdin's lamp. And that Aladdin lamp will be in the hands of the poorest women in Bangladesh or elsewhere. She will just touch the Aladdin's lamp and the digital genie will come out of it and say, what can I do for you? And any problem she has can be resolved by the help of the digital genie. We have the digital genie in our hand right now. But the poor woman doesn't have it yet. That's the challenge we have, how to bring it happen, bring it to them, bring it to them. If we had that digital genie with the touch screen on that, on the digital lamp, nobody in the world should be illiterate anymore. It will be so much fun to learn just playing around with that little gadget one has. That little gadget, the Latin Slam, will become the friend, philosopher, and guide for everybody around the world to overcome whatever shortcoming or difficulty he or she started with. And you have just heard about my work creating Grameen Bank. And when I went back to Bangladesh teaching economics, I had no idea that I'll someday get involved with banking. I had no idea about banking. I didn't know any learning about banking. But circumstances forced me into it. And since I didn't know anything about banking, that became a big help for me. I didn't have to follow their rules. I just look at my, with my bare eyes and see, saw whatever 
is there and try to respond to those problems that I saw and created a banking system which now looks like exactly the opposite of what the conventional banks do. If I knew the rules, probably I would not dare to break those rules. Since I didn't know it, I didn't have any problem creating new rules and breaking all of them. Conventional banks go to the rich, we made sure we go to the poor. The poorer you are, the more attractive you are for us. If you are the poorest, we kind of celebrate that we found you. And it's our job now, help find resources for you so that you can change your life. And we created a bank where we emphasize on the women. Conventional banks mostly go to men. We decided to go to women. It changed their life, it changed their family, it changed the country. Most dramatic thing that happened in Bangladesh in the last 25 years any visitor to Bangladesh will tell you. It is the empowerment of women. The status of women has changed so, so differently right now than it was 25 years back. One after another, you see the differences that it made to people's life in the whole society. And we created a bank, unlike conventional banks, which are owned by the rich, we made Grameen Bank owned by the poor and owned by the poor women. So all the borrowers of Grameen Bank own the bank. Unlike the traditional way of thinking that you have to bring donations, assistance from the government to run something for the poor people. We defied that. We created a bank which runs by its own money. We just take deposits, just like any other bank, and lend that money to the poor women. We lend out over $100 million a month, and all this money comes from the deposits of the bank. And the bank makes profit. Profit goes back to the borrowers as dividend because they own the bank. We concentrated on the children of the families of Grameen Bank. We wanted to make sure they do not remain illiterate like their parents, who are totally illiterate. We made sure all the children go to school. And we are very happy that we succeeded in that. And then we saw streams of these children going up the ladder of the education and coming to higher education. We gave them education loans to continue with higher education. So we have thousands and thousands of students in medical schools, engineering schools, universities all around the country. Many of them have completed their PhDs. And sometimes when I meet these young people, try to understand their problems, one common frustration they come up with is it. We have education, we are finishing that. But what about our jobs? There's no job in the country. So I started telling them, look, you are very privileged young people. You are privileged because your mother owns a bank. Why should you be looking for jobs? You should be taking a pledge. And the pledge would be, I'm not a job seeker. I'm a job giver. And prepare yourself to be a job giver. So change your mentality of just being in the employment market to finding a job, looking, knocking at everybody's door. If you feel frustrated that you don't know how to start a business or something like that, you just look at your mother. She's an illiterate woman. Many years back, she joined Grameen Bank. She was scared to death taking this money in her own hand to use it and pay back. 
but she overcame those fears. And she became a successful business person. What good is your education if you are not better than your mother? So why can't you at least do something what your mother does 10 times as big, 50 times as big, or 100 times as big, if you don't have any other new idea, and gradually you come up with new idea. So we look at these young people, the son and the daughter, and you look at the mother side by side. We always come up with the same thought that I always feel. The mother could have been a doctor too, like her daughter. But she couldn't even go to school. Is this her fault? Is this something lacking in her? No, nothing is lacking in her. Simply society never gave her the opportunity to go there. So I sum up by concluding, poverty is not created by the poor people. Poverty is created by the system that we all built in which we have to live. And that's what created poverty. Seeds of poverty is not in the person. Seeds of poverty is in the system. Look at the banking, what it does. Re refuses to extend their services to the majority of the world population. Two and a half years back, we started a main program in New York City because we are challenged that it cannot be done in this country. I always said it can be done anywhere in this planet. So taking that challenge, we started it in Queens, New York in 2008, January. That's the year financial crisis hit the world. So we had an amazing situation where in Queens, Grameen program with no collateral, no guarantee, was flourishing. Repayment is near 100%. On the other side of the street, big banks are collapsing. The, these big banks told me back in 1976, banks cannot lend money to the poor because they are not credit worthy. So I started asking people in New York, can you tell me who are credit worthy now? Journalists ask me, what do you want to achieve in New York City by lending this little money to these poor people? I said, I just have one idea. I hope I can succeed in doing that. If you succeed in New York City, I hope you do. Then there will be no payday loans in New York City. All these payday loans will be done, finished with 1,000% interest, 1,500% interest. I said, we are looking for a day when there'll be no pawn shops in New York City. There'll be no check cashing company in the New York City. Or in... It became successful. We, are, we have opened a branch in Manhattan and Brooklyn, another branch in Brooklyn. This year we'll be starting in Washington, D.C in San Francisco. And I'm very happy the Credit Union of North Carolina is helping us in getting a Credit Union license so that we can take deposits and lend money. We're very grateful to them. And the problem of the system also in this conceptualization of what we are as a human being. In business, human beings are conceptualized as a money-making machines. Business means business to make money, <coughs> nothing else. And on top of it, you have to maximize profit. I said, human beings are not one-dimensional being. Human being is a multi-dimensional being. They are not just money-making machines. If you can interpret the true human being within the framework of economic theory, then the world will be very different. So I'm suggesting that we create another kind of business. The existing business is built on the selfishness of human being. Everything is for me, nothing for others. 
but there is selflessness in all human being every human being has this quality and we create a business on the basis of selflessness everything is for others nothing for me and we can do both we have options now as young people graduating you'll be coming up with the idea what do i do do i work for a profit making company or do i work for a social business or do i do do i create a social business or do i create a profit making business it's up to us to decide it's an option it's not something anybody is forcing on you and social business is a business dedicated to solve a problem any problem you see can be solved with a creative mind individual become very powerful i was in glasgow and one of the problem they were discussing with me they have thousands of families in glasgow city who are on third generation unemployment i said how come I said because of our welfare system i said that's a shame if i was one of them who was in third generation unemployed i would be suing the government for crippling me i'm not a crippled person i'm a full bodied human being i have the creative energy i can take care of myself so in the discussion we decided to start social businesses to get unemployed people who are in generations remain unemployed to get them income opportunities and get out of the system there belong there for center so you see around us whatever problem we see we can create a social business that's the creativity you all have as, as an individual each individual each human being has the power enormous power to change the world and you have it are you going to use that to change the world that's the question i raise with you and thank you very much wishing all the success congratulations produced by duke university online at duke.edu